Good afternoon, this is All India Radio and I'm Anuja Kumar with the Midday News. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses visually impaired persons, releases visually impaired friendly coins of 1, 2, 5, 10 and 20 rupees. Prime Minister interacts with owners of Jan Aushadi Kendras and beneficiaries of Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Aushadi Pariyojana, says government is working to bring about holistic transformation in healthcare, states high quality medicines being provided at 50 to 90 percent less price. Cabinet approves promulgation of ordinance to fill up more than 5,000 vacancies of teachers in central universities by direct recruitment. CCEA approves additional funds to sugar mills amounting to 2,790 crore rupees. Supreme Court grants 10 days to government to apprise it of meeting date for Lokpal Appointment Selection Committee. At least 29 persons injured in a grenade blast at Jammu bus stand and in women's cricket, England beat India by five wickets in second T20 Guwahati. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today released the new series of visually impaired friendly circulation coins in New Delhi. He released the coins of 1, 2, 5, 10 and 20 rupees. The coins were released at a function where visually impaired children were specially invited. The Prime Minister said, the government is guided by the vision of reaching the last mile and the last person. He said the new series of coins have been designed and released, keeping that vision in mind. Mr. Modi said the new coins with various differentiating features will greatly aid the visually impaired. The new series of coins will facilitate the visually impaired and instill confidence in them. The Prime Minister also mentioned about various initiatives taken by the government for the welfare of the Divyang community. दिव्यांग जनों के जीवन को समझना, उनकी दिक्कतों को समझना, उनके कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल को बढ़ाना, ऐसे अनेक निर्णय करते-करते हम काम कर रहे हैं। अभी भारत सरकार की जो वेबसाइट, करीब 100 वेबसाइट ऐसी हैं कि जो हमारे दिव्यांग जन, विशेष करके हमारे प्रज्ञाचक्षु, आराम से उस वेबसाइट को देख सकते हैं, समझ सकते हैं। during their interaction with the Prime Minister, the visually impaired children thanked him for introducing the new series of coins. They added that these coins will greatly ease their daily routine. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said the government is working towards bringing about a holistic transformation in the healthcare sector and for this the vision of the centre is no silos, only solutions. Mr. Modi said, Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jan Aushadi Pariyojana PMBJP is one big step towards the vision and the product basket of the scheme covering more than 800 medicines and 154 surgical devices. The Prime Minister said, the government has controlled the pricing of several important medicines and is providing these quality medicines at an affordable rate to the poor people. सामान्य उपयोग की 850 से ज्यादा दवाइयों का मूल्य नियंत्रित किया गया है पूरे देश में जन औषधि केंद्रों की एक श्रृंखला स्थापित की गई जहां उच्च गुणवत्ता वाली 800 से ज्यादा दवाइयां बहुत ही कम कीमत पर उपलब्ध हैं Mr Modi was interacting with the beneficiaries and entrepreneurs associated with the PMBJP from over 5,000 locations through video conferencing on the occasion of Jan Aushadi Divas. He said the PMBJP is also providing employment to people. More than 5,000 Jan Aushadi Kendras are functional in 652 districts. The Cabinet has approved a proposal for promulgation of the Central Educational Institutions Reservation in Teachers Cadre Ordinance 2019. The decision will allow filling up of more than 5,000 vacancies by direct recruitment in teachers' cadre. This decision is also expected to improve teaching standards in the higher education institutions to attract all eligible talented candidates. The Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs, CCEA, has approved additional funds to sugar mills amounting to 2,790 crore rupees. 
the approval of interest subvention will help in improving liquidity of sugar mills by way of value addition to their revenues from supply of ethanol under ethanol blended petrol program. This will also help in reducing sugar inventories and facilitate timely clearance of cane price dues for farmers. The CCEA also approved the construction of a third railway line between Narayangarh in West Bengal and Bhadrak in Odisha of 155 kilometers length. The total estimated cost of this project is over 1,866 crore rupees and will be completed by 2023-24. This will also help in generating direct employment for about 37 lakh man days. The Supreme Court today granted 10 days to the government to apprise it of the meeting date of the selection committee for appointment of the Lokpal and its members. Attorney General K.K. Venugopal informed the Apex Court bench headed by Chief Justice of India Ranjan Gogoi that the search committee headed by former Supreme Court Judge Ranjana Prakash Desai has completed the deliberations. He said the committee has recommended three panels of names to the selection committee for appointment of the chairperson, judicial and non-judicial members of Lokpal. The AG told the bench that he will ask the Secretary of the Department of Personnel and Training to ensure that the meeting of the Prime Minister-headed selection committee is convened as early as possible. The court also rejected a plea seeking direction to make public the proposed names in the three panels. This is All India Radio giving you the news. School ki jab hui chutti, hum bachchon ne ye beeda uthaya. Aane wale chunaat ka har pehlu ek naatak ke zariye samjhaya. Har nagrik jo January ek tak pura karega 18 saal, wo karwaye apna registration har hal. Aur har yogi matdaata ko check karna hai voter list mein apna naam. Kyunki wahi matdaata vote dekar aayenge jo apna naam voter list mein payenge. To samay rehte panjikaran karna aur voter list mein apna naam check karna bhule na. Ek mahade aur ek bhi voter chhute na. Verify or register on nbsc.in or call voter helpline 1950. <laughs> यार मेरा एक ड्रीम था ना अपने घर का वो अब पूरा हो गया है वो कैसे अरे प्रधानमंत्री आवास योजना शहरी के क्रेडिट लिंक सब्सिडी स्कीम में इंटरेस्ट पर सब्सिडी मिलती है जिससे हम हर महीने की ईएमआई में करीब करीब पच्चीस सौ रूपए तक की बचत कर सकते हैं जो कि 20 साल के लोन में लगभग 6 लाख की सेविंग हो जाती है साथ जी हाँ अधिक जानकारी के लिए अपने नजदीकी बैंक शाखा में संपर्क करें हाउसिंग फॉर ऑल सबके लिए घर ये हमारा सपना भी है और संकल्प भी है At least 29 persons have been injured in a grenade blast at General Bus Stand in Jammu today. Condition of three injured persons is said to be critical. Police sources told AIR Jammu that the grenade blast took place inside the bus stand premises in the heart of the Jammu city. Security forces have cordoned off the area and search operation has been launched to nab the culprits. In Jammu and Kashmir, the authorities have booked Jammu and Kashmir Liberation Front JKLF Chief Yasin Malik under Public Safety Act. He is being shifted to Court Balwal Jail in Jammu. Malik was detained on 22nd of February and is presently lodged at Koti Bagh Police Station in Srinagar. Sources indicated that Union Home Ministry is likely to impose a ban on Hurriyat Conference and other separatist political parties. Last month, Jamate Islami was banned. Pakistan's former President Parvez Musharraf has admitted that Masood Azhar led Jaish e Mohammed carried out attacks in India during his tenure on the instructions of the intelligence agencies. Musharraf, who is currently in Dubai, said that the Pakistan government's crackdown on the JEM, which also tried to assassinate him twice, was a good move. Union Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad accused Congress President Rahul Gandhi of lying on the Rafal issue. Talking to media in New Delhi, the minister alleged that Mr. Gandhi is inadvertently or deliberately playing into hands of Rafale competitors by alleging corruption in the fighter jets deal. He said the Congress leader has no belief in the Indian Air Force, Supreme Court or CAG and asked if Mr. Gandhi believed in Pakistan instead. Earlier today, the Congress president had demanded an inquiry into the missing files issue and the role of the PMO in the deal. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. 
दिव्यांगजन अब न रहेंगे लाचार साथ है उनके भारत सरकार दिव्यांगजनों के आर्थिक सशक्तिकरण हेतु दिव्यांगजनों के कौशल प्रशिक्षण के लिए राष्ट्रीय कार्य योजना का क्रियान्वयन किया जा रहा है अब तक उनतीस राज्यों और एक केंद्र शासित प्रदेश में फैले दो प्रशिक्षण भागीदारों एवं दिव्यांगजन सशक्तिकरण विभाग के राष्ट्रीय संस्थानों तथा एन को लगभग एक करोड़ की धनराशि एक लाख सत्तावन दिव्यांगों के कौशल विकास हेतु आवंटित किया जा चुका है इस योजना के अंतर्गत लाभार्थी को कौशल प्रशिक्षण के साथ साथ अन्य सहायता प्रदान की जाती है जैसे कि व्यक्तिगत सहायक और उपकरण के लिए समर्थन पाँच हजार रूपए प्रति दिव्यांगजन वाहन भत्ता एक हजार ऐसी पंद्रह सौ रूपए प्रति माह पोस्ट प्लेसमेंट सहायता तीन हजार रूपए प्रति माह दो ऐसी छह महीने के लिए अधिक जानकारी के लिए विभाग की वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट डिसबिलिटी अफेयर डॉट जी ओ वी डॉट इन आरोप सम्पर्क करें दिव्यांग जन सशक्तिकरण विभाग द्वारा जनहित में जारी The Venezuelan government has announced to expel German ambassador Daniel Kriner from the country. President Nicolas Maduro's embattled government yesterday declared the German ambassador persona non grata and ordered him to leave the country within 48 hours. According to an official statement, he was accused of recurrent acts of interference in internal affairs of Venezuela. Mr. Kriner was among a group of diplomats who helped opposition leader Juan Guaido return to Venezuela on Monday by meeting him at the airport. Russian lawmakers have approved a law under which officials will now be able to fine or block online media outlets for publishing news they deem fake. Russia's lower house of parliament, which is overwhelmingly dominated by the pro-Kremlin United Russia Party, yesterday voted in favor of the bill. The law would allow prosecutors to decide what amounts to fake news and gives the media watchdog the power to demand an outlet delete the information. Websites failing to comply would be blocked and fines could reach over 22,700 US dollar in case infraction leads to grave consequences like death or writing. However, rights group reacted by calling the move a virtual censorship. US military says Washington is keeping a close watch on North Korea following reported activity at a rocket launch site there. The head of the US Indo-Pacific Command, Admiral Phil Davidson today said US is working with countries including South Korea, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, Canada and France to enforce sanctions against North Korea at sea. Speaking in Singapore, he said maritime petrol aircraft and ships are watching for any sanction breaches via methods like ship-to-ship -ship transfers. In women's cricket, India has lost the second T20 international by five wickets to England at Guwahati today. With the win, England has taken an unassailable lead of 2-0 in this three-match series. Winning the toss and put India to bat, England restricted the host to a below-par score of 111 and managed to reach the target with five balls to spare. For India, Captain Mithali Raj was the top scorer with 20 runs, while for England, Catherine Brandt took three wickets and Lindsay Smith claimed two. The third and final match of the series will also be played in the same venue on Saturday. The Sensex at the Bombay Stock Exchange gained 69 points to trade at 36,705. Nifty at the National Stock Exchange also added 7 points to trade at 11,060. The rupee at the Forex market also strengthened 24 paise to 70 rupees and 4 paise against the US dollar in afternoon deals. And now before we close the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addresses visually impaired persons, releases visually impaired friendly coins of 1, 2, 5, 10 and 20 rupees. Prime Minister interacts with owners of Jan Aushadi Kendras and beneficiaries of Pradhan Mantri Bhartiya Jan Aushadi Pariyojana, says government is working to bring about holistic transformation in health care. States high quality medicines being provided at 50 to 90 percent less price. Cabinet approves promulgation of ordinance to fill up more than 5,000 vacancies of teachers in central universities by direct recruitment. CCEA approves additional funds to sugar mills amounting to 2,790 crore rupees. Supreme Court grants 10 days to government to apprise it of meeting date for Lokpal Appointment Selection Committee. At least 29 persons injured in a grenade blast at Jammu bus stand. And in women's cricket, England beat India by five wickets in second T20 at Guwahati. And with that, we end the midday news.